Calling Earl, making sure he's okay with the world. Um, yeah, we did. How did that meeting go? I was in the office, but I was busy playing Soldier of Fortune while you got to have an in-depth meeting with Earl. <laughs> See, I get a bad rap on this show, man. Everyone thinks I'm, you know, inhuman and out of my freaking mind. Uh -huh. Who was there? Who was the one, like, you know, cuddling Earl in the back office? And Matt Devote came to us. Who was the one that allowed Earl to suckle on his breast? Opie. Thank you. Matt well, Devote you, came you, in. You, you, well, uncaring son of a bitch. I can't help it. I was in the middle of a very tough but level. Couldn't get off your Soldier of Fortune game for two minutes to... To talk to a guy that's been a little sad about the abuse he's been taking on our radio show lately. Like I care? Did you see the shot I made? <laughs> yeah, oh, my did. God. Psycho Mark almost creamed. <laughs> it was hysterical. There was a guy. He's standing behind a, a brick wall. I edged out with my sniper rifle. I zoomed way in. I picked his toe off. He starts jumping around, grabbing his foot, bleeding. And it exposed enough of his skull when I picked his head off in two shots. It was like, bam, foot, bam, head. The guy just fell down on the table. And just sprayed blood all over oh, the back wall. Oh, it's hysterical. Wall. There's Earl, like, being coddled because of his, uh, his uh, stress that he's having with this program. Mm -hmm. And uh, me and Psycho Mark are laughing our balls off because some guy just, guy just whacked a guy. On, on the Soldier of Fortune game. Well, we got, we got some ideas about Earl. I'm the Invisible Man. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. I, I, I went to sleep last night chuckling. With uh, Earl and the Invisible Man? Yeah. Yes. I'm the Invisible Man. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> the Invisible Man. All right, dude. where's Earl? It's time for his decision. Yeah, we gave him a choice yesterday. Uh, he was having such trouble with the program yesterday, feeling that he was the brunt of a lot of our abuse yesterday. And uh, we gave him a choice because he was getting all cranky. He wouldn't come on the phone. He'd hang up on us in the middle of our conversation with him. And uh, we gave him a choice yesterday. Told him to think about it overnight. Do you want to be part of this program? Do you want to leave this program? Right. It's a final decision. If he uh, chooses to be on this program, he will be on this program, and I guess. Well, and I uh, discussed some options today at lunch. Yeah. Um, Earl's in the studio. Hey, Earl. How you doing? Did you did the meeting make you feel better? I hope you weren't upset that I was playing Soldier Fortune during the entire. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't expect the meeting. entire meeting. Did you see that shot I took of the guy's foot? It was great. Earl, I, <laughs> Earl, I showed some sensitivity in the back office today, right? Yeah, surprisingly. Very cool. Yeah, I'm very cool. Oh, off, off air. Now did that? <laughs> yeah, off air. <laughs> we switch roles off air. And it's the bastard. Like I just don't care about anything. And I'm very and, busy. And I'm the one that uh, keeps everybody uh, happy. I guess. And I just had a <laughs> very busy. I had things to do. I'm so, on the final level, Sophie. So Earl, um, you've taken some hits lately on the show. A lot of abuse about the Invisible Man. A lot of abuse about your new nickname. So everyone is wondering, do you want to still be a part of the ONA show? Yes, I do. Oh, there's a surprising, uh, there's a surprising answer. Because <laughs> you can't, you can't be part of the ONA show, but oh, oh, help me, help me, help me, somebody help me, help me, help me. Not bad. <laughs> So, uh, are you okay with this program? Yeah. yeah. You're okay with uh, with uh, your appearances on this program, the way you're treated on this program? Mm -hmm. There are certain points when I'm like, don't put this on the air. And that's not your fault. It's more Spaz's fault. And what? Well, how is Spaz getting home? Yeah, no, like when, I call, when I'll call in, I'll say, God, with something absolutely that has oh, nothing we, to do with the show, I'll say, don't. This is not for air. We're, we're, we were well aware of the stuff you didn't want on the air. That makes it uh, better to, to bring up on the air. Earl, the stuff you didn't want on the air was uh, the friend, allegedly, that was in the uh, studio. That was it. But you mentioned it during your shift that <clears throat> somebody was in the studio. So that's why we said, well, who was that? I'm the invisible man. And, <laughs> and we went on to say that there wasn't anybody in the studio. And then it gave us two hours of hilarious radio yesterday. Hilarity. We know who, who was in the studio. We know. And I'm the invisible man. <laughs> and I think it's time to expose it. <laughs> Earl, it was the great kazoo, wasn't it? <laughs> from the Flintstones. Remember that from the Flintstones? Only Fred and Barney could see him? <laughs> hey, that was the great kazoo. 
<laughs> Where is he? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Hello, Tum Tums. <laughs> yeah, Earl <Little> Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get Fred and Barney. We'll go bowling. <laughs> I don't like being referred to as the Invisible Man. <laughs> All right. Kazoo. <laughs> hey, Kazoo. <laughs> or we can write you off. No, no, no. great Kazoo. Well, Dum Dum. <laughs> yes. Earl. <laughs> Earl. Um, so you still want to be part of the show? Sure. Definitely. Ant and I are not really sure that... Yeah, we did a lot of thinking. You're so. um, capable of handling the abuse that we throw at you. Yeah, some people can choose to want to do something, but then uh, other people can see that maybe they're not into it. You know how the cops have to take a stress test and stuff like that, a psychological evaluation? The guy might want to be a cop really bad, but uh, the people in charge might see that maybe he can't handle it. And it's in his best interest that he not be a cop. Well, maybe it's in your best interest that even though you want to be part of the program, that uh, you're not part of the program anymore. Well, it's just you seem a little in, unstable, little wrapped, a little too tight. Well, that could be true. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're thinking of a scenario here. Yeah, some way where you know, maybe everyone will be happy here. We're thinking of killing you off. You right. ever see how they do that on Not TV? Literally, but... Yeah. No, in the sitcom sense. You ever see how they do that all the time? They kill off a character? You've been a part of uh, the O&A show for almost two years. Right from the beginning, one of the uh, initial characters. And we're thinking of... Uh, you are part... Like, if this was, if it was like Happy Days, you would be like the Richie, uh, Potsy, Ralph Mouth. No, he always, obviously would be Sticks. <laughs> That's the only black guy in Abbey Day. Hey, is that reference of the day yet? Come Very on. good. I got to okay. give you a reference of the day. All right. <laughs> but, but as far as the uh, the the people that were on the show right from the start, you know how that was: Richie, Potsy, Ralph, Fonz. Can you know Chuck all there. Got to be Chuck. Chuck, well, Chuck was there from the beginning, but you still don't have one. Chuck, there's a, there's a good example. He just came up with one. Yeah, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck just disappeared off of uh, Happy Days. So the brother. I guess what Ann's trying to say is we're going to write you off the show, so we just need a scenario. Like, do you just disappear like Chuck did? Maybe he just disappears and no one ever talks about him again. Right. You just walk off with the basketball and then never to return. Pull like a maybe like a Chrissy Snow, off of. Uh, Three's company, where all of a sudden you leave, and and sometimes they get a phone call from Chrissy. You ever see that? But you never hear Chrissy's voice. You never see her face. But uh, the other one's on the phone, and she's talking. She goes, hangs up, and goes, Jack, that was Chrissy. She says hi. You know, but there's never any voice of Chrissy or anything. Or, or Mrs. Cunningham. That, yeah, Mrs. Cunningham. Oh, Chuck just called. You never see Chuck. You never hear his voice. They just refer to him on the phone. Maybe occasionally we can get up and go, Hey, look, uh, Earl was on the phone. We just talked to him. So, so we want to write your your end your ending to the Opie and Anthony show. Maybe we can start telling our listeners that <laughs> that Black Earl got an, another job at a at a radio station in Seattle. In Seattle. And then when they see you on the streets of New York, they could go, Hey, Earl, you're back for the weekend. How's Seattle? Yeah. <laughs> like Frazier. Right. You know, Frazier, after Cheers, he went to Seattle and did his little psychology uh, show on the radio. Now, Earl, if I was the one going to be killed off from the ONA show, I would want to go out in a blaze of glory. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't that be great? I think we all could remember one that was just a dramatic ending to a character, Earl. Yeah. Let me give you an example here. Ah. Oh. Yeah, but I believe it was an airplane that went down. All right. Yeah. Who can forget? Who can forget Radar O'Reilly walking in? Walking into the operating room and announcing to everybody that Henry Blake's plane crashed. Spun in. There were no survivors. Remember? Henry in his little zoot suit. 
saying goodbye. Oh, it was so sad. Maybe we could have that. Spaz can come in or something <laughs> in the middle of the show, hold just on, interrupt the show. Yeah, hold on. Let me get the music. So we could say goodbye to you, and it seems like it's a happy ending. You walk down the hall with your bags packed. You're going home. Yeah. All right? And then we forget about you, and then like an hour or two later, we'll be in the middle of a f funny uh, uh, bit or something. Right. And then all of a sudden, we'll uh, be talking. All of a sudden, Spaz walks into the studio. Yeah, we'll be like... <laughs> right, Opie? Yeah. Farts are funny. Another fart joke. <laughs> Farty goes funny. Farts are funny. <laughs> guys, 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 um, at 5 o'clock this afternoon, Earl Douglas's chopper took off from the west side heliport and crashed into the Hudson River. There were no survivors. <laughs> Continue to do our show with our eyes all welled up with tears. <laughs> right, Earl? How about that ending? That was a good one for uh, Henry Blake. But your memory can live on through the Invisible Man because we're keeping him. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's the new character because you got to always have new characters coming into the, your sitcom. Right. Well. If you write one off, a new one has to come in. Sure. It's, it, it serves a lot of purposes. It allows the person that's being written off to pursue other things. It uh, makes a star out of the new guy, and it is a guaranteed ratings grabber. Mm -hmm. When they write off people on a show, ER, remember that? What was her name? Um, which one? one? The one, I think it was Noah Wiley's character right. and the girl when the homicidal maniac cut him up and she died. Yeah. I don't watch ER. I watched that one. Yes. But they wrote off, and maybe we'll have that. Maybe we'll have a homicidal maniac who gets through the tough, rigorous security here at WNEW <laughs> come in and just hack Earl to pieces. <laughs> so there's a lot of scenarios here. You can leave the show, but we always leave the door open like you can return. And every once in a while, we just check in with you with a one-sided conversation with a phone. On the phone, where we don't see you or hear you, but we refer to you on the phone. All of a sudden, out of commercials, they go, hey, Ant, you know who that was? It was Earl. That was Earl, checking in from Seattle. He, he just do called. He's doing great with his new radio job Earl. out there. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> or we could just get someone that could handle the Black Earl abuse, and we just... We just change black girls in the middle of the season and, and, and just make believe it's the same guy. Obviously, the best-known one of that, uh, Darren Stevens. Sure. When they exchanged Dick York for a Dick Sargent. They switched dicks right in the middle of the season. No one knew. So I think uh, that that's an option. Or a lot of people are saying the Seinfeld thing. Remember that? Yeah, where you're just a George's, uh Or, or George's uh, wife-to-be. When she was licking the envelopes, Earl could be licking the envelopes for the wow stickers and get poisoned mm. and, and kill them off that way in sort of a comedic Seinfeld fashion. Hey, what happened to Black Earl? <laughs> right. Now everyone's mm. coming up with suggestions, Anthony. Let's, yeah. uh, let's see uh, what Charlie thinks Earl, hey guys, Earl's end, end should be. What's up, Charlie? How's it going? Good. Uh, Brian's song. Let him get cancer, and you guys keep going on for like a week or two, you know, as, as his condition gets, uh, you know, as it works. And... <laughs> Should we give him a, that's another thing too, a disease. A disease. So we, we give him a disease and we milk it for like a week. Yeah, and, we, you, and you play the song every time. Yeah, we slowly fade you out, Earl, and then, you know, you have a dramatic ending where you have to say goodbye to everyone. That's a good one. <laughs> And, 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 and like, why do you guys can give a speech every, you know, to the, to the listening audience every, like, every couple of days? And in the background, you play that song that every time, you know, Brian Piccolo was in, you know, dying. Yeah. <laughs> and we all could cry. <laughs> what was that up. song? God, does anyone Wasn't remember it, that? Was it called Brian's song? It was song? Brian's song, yeah. 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 Oh, if we could only get Brian's song. Try to get that. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good scenario. That, that is a good one. Oh, I, oh, this is a good one. Paul from Lawrence checking in. Uh, the famous dream sequence. We wake up or someone wakes up and Earl was never there. Or Earl wakes from a dream, and, and he's, there's no radio show. I like the Bob Newhart, the second show. Where, right. Where he wakes up, and his, uh, his old hag haggard wife is in bed with him. Or Dallas. Remember that one? Oh. Oh, well, I had the weirdest dream. I was a character on the Opie and Anthony show. <laughs> but everyone knows NEW is the rock of New York, and I have to go help Scotzo today. <laughs> 
What a strange, strange turn of events that dream was. <laughs> hmm. I wonder what... Opie and Anthony, that's the weirdest thing. Everyone knows this is the Rock of New York. <laughs> I had a dream. You were there. And you. And you. Yeah, we can put you in pigtails and have you on a bed. And we'll have Spaz and Aunt and I and Rick and Psycho Mark and Ben yeah. all around the bed. I, I telling, you, be... telling you it was a bad dream. The cowardly lion. And then we could have, like, uh, I could be the scarecrow or something. Or uh, uh, Opie could be the tin man. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. TJ, what's up? What's going on, guys? How are you? I think you should do, like, a who shot Mr. Burns, who shot <laughs> black girl. Yeah. Or you could be, um, yeah, mysteriously shot. And then we, because then that'll help us with our storyline of our show. Then everyone has to figure out who, who shot, shot Earl. And then with the Mr. Burns, I was like, the obvious choice was Homer. With this, it was, the obvious choice would probably be uh, Psycho Mark. Right. Always running around doing the AK. <laughs> and you could just tease that along for a couple weeks. That's brilliant, man. God, that'd be great. Who shot Earl Douglas? Oh, that's a good one. What? Oh, Scooby Doo ending, where we rip off uh, Earl's mask, and it's our old boss. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? I, I'd have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Where's my ice cream cone? <laughs> God, the Scooby Doo ending. We should do the Scooby Doo ending. Scooby Doo ending. <laughs> Oh, that would be great. Hey, hey, you got me, guys. I'm back. Oh, my God. It's you. <laughs> we didn't expect it to be him. He was posing as Earl to try to change the format another time. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Or oh, we rip it off and it's the old promotion guy. Hello. <laughs> I was posing as Earl to get another satellite dish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if it wasn't for you meddling kids and Scooby-Doo, I'd have gotten away with a DSL system. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Shaggy. <laughs> Effing ponderous. Oh, uh, yeah, Casey Kasem was Shaggy. The voice of Shaggy Doo. A and little dog <laughs> named Scooby Doo. Andy, what's up? <laughs> what you could do is send Earl into the woods to film a documentary about wow. <laughs> <laughs> and you could call it the Black Witch Project. <laughs> or the Black <laughs> Bitch Project because he whines so much. I shouldn't have come here. <laughs> Right. I'm sorry about the little guy. Right. I should have said more stickers. <laughs> I love you, Mom. Uh, what is this? This pile of stuff into a stand table looks in front of the tent. <laughs> See, you went there this morning. I <laughs> threw piles all around my tent. <laughs> Big shot of him, but it's not running out his nose and thighs watering up. I better use a wide angle lens. Oh! Oh, oh, my, oh my God! Well, we're coming up with some great ways to write you off. Oh, the listener is just coming up with a bunch of them. Have Earl go downstairs and uh, reach for his wallet and get shot 40 times. <laughs> oh, my God. That's not funny. That's terrible. <laughs> I'm just reading them as I see them. Yeah. Uh, like The Sixth Sense, Earl was white the whole movie. <laughs> Gets in the wow van and drives off a cliff. Yeah, Earl, how do you want to go out? Yeah, maybe we could just. Do you want to go out in a blaze of glory or you want to leave the door open where you might come back? Big Yankee fan, you could get prostate cancer. <laughs> <laughs> we could kill you off every week like they do Kenny on South Park. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> you kill Black Earl, you bastard. You bastards. <laughs> There's so many ways we could get rid of you. <laughs> I think he's got to go out like. Like MASH, though, with Spaz coming in and making the announcement. Making an announcement with the touching <laughs> yeah. departure instead of the wacky comedy departure. Yeah, like he leaves, there's the memories, we're all happy, yeah. we're happy he's going home, we're happy he's going to something he, he's going to enjoy a little mm -hmm. better than uh, the, the abuse of this program. Right. 
And then uh, Spaz comes in and announces. Then just a tragic twist of the chopper went down. Chopper went down. You could see, like, as he's leaving, Spaz could be all teary and salute him as Black Girl walks to the elevators. Right. And then walks down to the streets of New York and, and waits three hours for a cab <laughs> that never shows up. And the camera just slowly fades all the way back, but you still see Earl trying to get that cab. Might get hit but you it. just know inside, and he's going to be okay, and he's going to eventually get that cab. <laughs> Taking off. For some reason, he's in a helicopter. I have no clue why. Where is he going in the helicopter? Uh, back to Forest Hills. Back to Forest Hills. <laughs> yeah. Right, because he can't drive. And his new life. His new life in Forest Hills. And all of a sudden... Oh, my God. <laughs> his brother went down. There were no survivors. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but Spaz actually reports it laughing because he hates black people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you hear black girl crash? <laughs> Stupid. So we'll think of something, Earl. All right, Ed. we got to take a break, but Earl, thank you. We'll figure this out and come up with a very dramatic... Uh, Your time is limited on this show. When's, uh, when's the big 3 out coming up, Earl? 28th. 28th. That's kind of one of those little milestones. Wow. Little hurdle. I say we write him off the show on his 30th birthday. 30th birthday. That, that, that's going to be a tough pill to swallow. May 28th. Turning 30 and you're written off uh, the hottest radio show in New York. Yeah. I think that's a Sunday. Yeah, it's a it? Sunday, yeah. Yeah. We'll work Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> we'll write you off on your 30th birthday. Oh, my God. Happy birthday, Earl. All right. Well, the, the title of the episode, Happy Birthday, Goodbye. A very special episode of Opie and Anthony. <laughs> Goodbye, old friend. Goodbye, Black Earl. All right, Ant. Let's take a break, okay? All right. <laughs> Keep the 14-year-old away from us. Have a drink. I want to bang you. This is normal radio, right? The Opie and Anthony Show. I don't know what it is. Just sit here and listen to you guys and drive down there and bash your heads in with a baseball bat. <laughs>